What's going on guys? John Alder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to train and test our convolutional neural network for PyTorch and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to train and test our convolutional neural network. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last video, we defined our convolutional neural network model. All right, if you didn't see that video, check the link in the pinned comment section below. You can also find the code there as well. So we set all this up. In this video, we're going to train and test this guy. So let's come down here. And before we get started with any of this stuff, let's import time. We want to keep track of how long this takes just for fun. So let's uh, create a start underscore time. And we'll set that equal to time dot time. And then let's sort of tap down a little bit. And probably a lot. And <laughs> let's go current time. Keep track of that. That's going to equal time dot time. And this time thing here, of course, is just what we just imported right here. That's just the basic Python time library, right? All right. So current time equals time dot time. And then let's create a total time. So total is going to equal our current time minus our start time. And the start time is right here, current time is right there. And finally, let's just print all this to the screen once we get done training and testing this thing. So let's create an F string and let's say training took. And then inside of here, we want the total divided by 60 so that we can turn this into minutes or exclamation point minutes, <laughs> whatever. So, all right, that's fun. So now, Let's make a bunch of space here and let's get into this. So this is going to take a little bit of coding, but it's not too much stuff. And I'm going to map this out before we actually get into this, because there's going to be a lot of tabbing and things can get kind of messed up if you don't really kind of map it out to begin with. So first we're going to create some variables. So let's create variables uh, to track things. Now we don't strictly speaking have to track anything, but in the next videos, we're going to want to kind of map this stuff out, make charts and graphs and see how well we did. And you don't have to do that, but it'll be fun too. So let's go ahead and do that. And then after that, we want to create a for loop of epochs. And the epochs are just the loops, the number of times we're going to loop through and train and test our stuff. So we're going to have that. And then inside of that, we're going to train. And we're also going to test. And inside of our training, we're going to update our parameters. And we're also going to, you know, print out some results. <laughs> okay. And that looks good. Let's give some space here. And we're probably going to do the same thing for test, but eh, we'll, by then we'll have figured it out. So, okay. So let's come up here and let's create some variables. And first off, we want to define how many epochs we want. And we're going to do five. You could do three, that'd probably be good, but I think five is a little bit better. And that's just, again, how many times we're going to loop through and train and test, right? We're going to train and test five times. We're going to go through five epochs, right? So what else do we want to keep track of? So like I said, we don't have to keep track of anything, but we're going to, and we're going to create a bunch of empty Python lists. And then as we go, we'll append to those lists and that's how we'll keep track of things. So we want a train underscore losses. And again, empty Python list. We want a test underscore losses. Again, empty Python list. We want to train correct. So how many we got correct? And you guessed it, we want a test correct. Keep track of how many testing things we got correct. So all right, that looks good. And that's kind of pretty much all we want to track. So that looks fine. So let's come down here and create our for loop. And most things that we're going to be doing here are going to be inside of this for loop. That's the epoch. That's the thing that's looping through, right? So you can see all of our training, all of our testing, I've tabbed it inside of this for loop. So sort of keep track of the positions of the tab. So let's go for I in the range of epochs. And again, we've just defined this as five times. So basically we could say for I in range of five if we wanted to, but we'll use a variable and uh, do it all fancy like that. So for I in range of epochs, first let's set a train underscore core, uh, training correct equal to zero and a testing underscore correct uh, equal to zero, not to be confused with these guys up here. Uh, but we'll start there, those at zero. And now inside of this, we need to set up our training. So let's go for B for batch. And we need a comma there. In X underscore train. 
y underscore train, and that's capital X and a lowercase y, of course. And we want to enumerate our train underscore loader. Remember, we created our train loader way up here a couple videos ago. So first, let's go b plus equals to one. So this is just basically going to start our batches at one. Then let's go y underscore pred, and we'll set that equal to our model x underscore train. And this is just going to get the predicted values from the training set. And you'll notice this is not flattened. It's 2D. There we go. Why is it 2D? Well, if you remember, our first convolutional layer is conv2D. It's looking for two dimensions. So we don't have to flatten this. We can just pass in the two dimensions. All right, that looks good there. We also now need to keep track of the loss. So loss equals criterion. And then we want to pass in y underscore pred. I can type. There we go. And y underscore train. Where we want to know how off are we? Uh, we want to compare the predictions to the correct answers in y train lowercase y, right? And that makes sense. We're passing the y predictions in the y train and we're comparing them. Let's bop this down a bit and let's get our predicted. And this is going to be torch.max. And we want to pass in y underscore pred dot data. And we want to index this off the first item. So here we want to add up the number of correct predictions. And this is indexed, like I said, off the first point. And the first item in an index is, you know, zero, one, well, the zeroth item. So we want the first item. So, all right, that looks good. Next, we want to figure out the batch correct. So this is going to equal to predicted, which we just defined right here. We want to set that equal, well, not set it equal, we want it when it is equal to y underscore train, then we want to dot sum that up. And basically here, we want to know how many we got correct uh, from this specific batch, right? So true here is going to equal one, and false is going to equal zero, and then we just sum those up, right? If it's true that predicted is the same as train, that's a one. If it's false, that means it's not the same. We get a zero, then we just sum those up and that's our batch correct. So then we want to keep track of our overall training correct. And that's just going to equal, well, plus equal our batch correct. So as we go along, every batch will update our train correct. In fact, let me put that in here. Let's go. Let's keep track as we go along in training. That looks pretty good. Now we need to update our parameters, right? So let's go optimizer dot zero grad. And then let's go loss dot backward. And finally, let's go optimizer dot one step. So that will update our parameters as we go along. And finally, let's print out some results. So let's go, hey, if the batch and I don't know, let's go every 600 or so of these when that equals zero. So batch modulus 600, when that's zero, then let's print something onto the screen just so we have something to look at. So let's go print and let's create an F string. Let's keep track of what epoch it is. So that's going to be I because up here, right, we're looping through for I in the range of the epoch. So for the first epoch, it's one. For the second epoch, I will be two, three, four, five. So we want to know, hey, which epoch are we on? So that's I. Uh, what else do we want to know? We want to probably know what batch we're on. So that's just our B. Remember, we defined that guy right here. And what else? Loss, maybe? Sure. <laughs> so that's going to be our loss.item. And that should do it. Let's 
tab over one time and append our variables that we set up at the beginning of this. So let's go train underscore losses dot append. And we just want to pass in the loss. And we also want train underscore correct dot append. And this we want trn underscore core that we did right here. So that's why when we started these, we started these at zero, they're sort of like internal counts. And then when we get the finished internal count, we'll just sort of transfer those append those over to our big guys here that we defined right here. Now make sure this is all tabbed correctly. This needs to line up with our for loop, which is just tabbed over looks like two spaces, but it's one tab. We'll use the tab key. Same thing here, two spaces, but it's actually tab. So okay, that looks good. So that's the training. That's pretty much it. Not too bad, right? So now we want to come down here and do our testing. So let's go with torch dot no underscore grad. Why no grad? Well, that's because we want no gradient. Uh, so we don't update uh, our weights and biases, right? With our test data. And then inside of here, let's go for B, same deal, but now we want X underscore test instead of train, right? And Y underscore test instead of train in enumerate. And then we want the test underscore loader. And again, this is going to look very familiar to what we just did right here. So for B of X train, Y train, same thing here. So for B of X test, Y test, and here we have the test loader instead of the train loader, right? And of course, we just now want y val equal to our model x underscore test. And we want our predicted again, set that equal to torch dot max. And this is going to be y underscore val dot data of one. And again, we're indexing on the first thing. And again, this is just adding up correct predictions, just like we did up here. And then let's keep track of test underscore core. So we'll just plus equal this to our predicted, or set that to test for equalness. And then again, we just sum this up. And the same thing here, remember, it's true equals one, false equals zero, and sum away, right? So now, let's come down here. And again, let's keep track of our loss, this is going to be criterion of y underscore val and y underscore test. And then we want our test underscore losses to append that loss and our test underscore correct to append our test underscore core, which I misspelled that there. So test core, test core. This is test correct and test losses because up here we call this test correct and test losses. These are our variables that we defined back at the beginning. So, okay, that is looking pretty good. So let's get, pull this stuff back up and something has gone wonky here. What's going on? Oh, I misspelled losses. <laughs> L-O-S-S-E-S. -S -E -S. There we go, that looks better. So again, come back through here and try and make sure this is all lined up correctly. This stuff's going to be on the outside, but then we've got our for loop and pretty much everything else is going to be inside that for loop until we get back outside of it when we just want to keep track of the, how long this thing took to run, right? But all of the testing and all of the training stuff is inside this for loop, right? The testing and the training, that's all going to line up. Everything inside the training block here. So, okay, let's pull this back. And now let's go ahead and run this. Fingers crossed, that's a lot of typing and I almost always mess things up when there's a lot of typing. So let's shift enter to run this. Now this is gonna take three, four, maybe five minutes uh, to run through this. But if you right away see an epoch zero and a batch of 600, that is probably what you wanna see. We've got our loss here and it's already, well, no, it's going up. It looks like that's not great. And then it pops back down again. And it looks like the loss is kind of decreasing, sort of. It's jumping all over the place. I don't know. We'll look at this in a bit. But for now, I'm going to just pause this and let it do its thing. And we'll come back when this finishes doing all the stuff. Again, it's going to take three or four, maybe five minutes at the most, probably. And we'll take it from there.
Okay, and we're done here. So again, it started out at zero and 600, and you can see it's going by 600 every time. Why 600? Well, because up here, that's what we told it to print out. Whenever the module is 600 equals zero, that's sets of 600, basically. It's gonna print out this thing, and that's what we're seeing here. So it starts out at 0.16 loss, and you can see it goes down, and this looks like it's decreasing over time, so that's probably good. We'll talk about what that means in the next video. But we can see down here, training took 2.76 minutes. That's pretty fast. I figured it'd take three or four minutes, but hey, that worked pretty good. And the reason why we have this little thing right here that's so very cool is because at the beginning of this video, we, we printed this out on the screen, training took, and we kept track of the time. And you can see down here at the bottom, it says two minutes and 46 seconds. That's how long it took to execute this cell, which is probably the same as 2.76 minutes. 2.76 minutes is the same as two minutes and 46 seconds-ish. That sounds about right. 75% and yeah, that's right. <laughs> so very cool. So yeah, if you didn't get any of this stuff, if you got some errors, you probably either have a typo somewhere here or something's not indented correctly. Again, Python is tab indent specific. So you have to tab for each one of these or if you come up here and just hit enter, it should bop it over for you. But check that if things aren't lined up the way they are in this video, that's probably where you went wrong, or you just have a typo somewhere and just check your code. So that's all for this video. If you liked to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codeb.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So it's access to all my courses, over 60 courses, thousands of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 180,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codeb.com and I'll see you in the next video.